Hey guys, my name is Shreyas, and welcome to Simple Biology. Today, we're going to be talking about atoms, elements, and compounds. Now, you might be wondering, why is the first video in Simple Biology on atoms, elements, and compounds? Isn't this chemistry? Well, before we discuss any biology, I want to go ahead and discuss a few things in chemistry, which will be important to know when we discuss other topics in biology. Doing this now will make it easier to understand topics in biology later down the road. Um, I just want to emphasize that just because you were bad at chemistry, maybe you've already had an introduction to chemistry and taken a chemistry class, just because you're bad at chemistry uh, doesn't mean that you're going to be bad at biology. So just don't get scared by saying, oh, there's just for the first unit in simple biology is chemistry. And I w I'm not good at chemistry, so I'm not going to be good at biology. Please don't think that. Just bear through and watch these few videos. Even if you don't understand some concepts within this chemistry review unit, um, that doesn't mean you're going to be bad at biology. So don't be scared. Okay, so let's first talk about what atoms are. Now, atoms are the particles that make up matter. Matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. And matter is made up of small particles called atoms. And the structure of an atom, well, atoms are made up of three types of particles, protons. Pro pro protons are positively charged, neutrons, neutrons are neutral and charged, and electrons, and electrons are negatively charged. And they're in this unique structure. Let me go ahead and draw that for you. Um, so the protons and the elect—I mean, protons and the neutrons—are going to be in the center of an atom, and they are densely packed within this structure called a nucleus. Okay, and the electrons are going to travel around the nucleus in energy levels. They're going to orbit the nucleus. These again are called, let me write that down for you, energy levels. This would be the first energy level, and then there would be another energy level right here, and then there could be another energy level. And the first energy level right here is going to have the least amount of energy, and as you go up in energy levels, the electrons will have more and more energy. As you go up in energy levels like this, the electrons will have more and more energy. And the outermost energy level, in this case right here, that would be what I'm highlighting, the outermost energy level is going to consist of what we call the valence electrons. And the valence electrons are um, play a very important role in bonding, and that's going to be the next video. But just know that the electrons that would be found let me just draw in some electrons here. The electrons that are found in the outermost energy level are the valence electrons. Okay. Now, elements elements can be considered the building blocks of matter. Just let's like say a house. A house has building blocks like the bricks and the carpet and the lights and the wires and the wood. These are all the building blocks of a house. In the same sense, elements are the building blocks of matter. And the special thing about elements is right here. Elements cannot be broken down to other substances by chemical reactions. They're the building blocks. They're like the pure form. And elements consist of only one type of atom, and the number of protons an atom has determines what element it is. So, for example, if you have an atom and that atom has six protons, that means it's going to be carbon, and carbon is one of the elements. If an atom has eight protons, that means it's going to be oxygen. Um, if an atom has three protons, that means it's going to be lithium. So that's the most two 
the mo most important things I want to take you from this is just that the number of protons in an atom determines what element it is, and that elements are the building blocks to what we call compounds. Now, a compound here are made up of elements which are bonded together. And in compounds, the elements are in a fixed ratio. So let me give you an example of that. An example of a compound would be carbon dioxide. You've probably heard of this compound before. Carbon dioxide is a um, get that dangerous gas that comes from uh, from factories, which causes uh, the global warming and all sorts of other bad things. Um, it also comes out of your car. Well, that's besides the point. Carbon dioxide is going to have a fixed ratio of this carbon atom and this oxygen atom. So for every one atom of carbon, there's going to be two atoms of oxygen. So that's what I mean by fixed ratio. Let's look at another example. Um, propane. Propane is a liquid. Well, it's a pressurized liquid which is found in many gas containers and it's used um, in stoves. And propane, and in propane, for every three atoms of carbon, there's going to be eight atoms of hydrogen. So that's what I mean by fixed ratio. And that's basically it.